We've discussed optical anisotropy and how we can use it to make polarizers. Let's look at some of the microscopic sources of anisotropy, just so you'll be familiar with where this comes from. I've alluded to a few of them as we've gone along, but let's have a closer look. So a lot of the elements I've been showing you are polymers. They're plastics, right? So these two cross polarizers, it's plastic. This polarizer I can put in between is plastic, etc. So what is plastic? Plastic is polymers. What are polymers? Little chain molecules that go around and are really long and stick together and make a big tangled mess and make a solid, right? That's basically a plastic or a polymer. And if you stretch it and heat it and stretch it, they can be aligned, right? So you can have polymer materials, plastics, where the polymers are all more or less aligned on average. So you can imagine as soon as you do that, you might start to get some, some anisotropy because on average, it looks different going this way, going along the chain than going this way, going against the chain. And these polarizers, sort of the uh, typical plastic type, that is pretty much what's happening. It's polyvinyl alcohol, and they put in a little bit of iodine, and the iodine atoms stick to the polymer chain, and they give a little bit of free electrons that can kind of conduct along the chain. So you're making it a little bit conductive, not conductive like a metal, but at optical frequencies, you're making it conductive and you're making it absorb. So you have strong absorption this way and weak absorption this way because the electrons can't transfer as much between the chains, they can just go down the chains. So by having sort of a doped polymer film, uh, you can get anisotropy in the imaginary part of the refractive index in the absorption. So that's how you make a polarizer. If you don't put in the dopant or whatever makes it sort of conductive in one direction, there's still going to be anisotropy. If you still think about what the light causes the electrons to do, it'll look a little bit different for the bonds that are going along the chain as it will for the bonds between the chain. So you also, in most plastics, are going to get anisotropy in the real part of the refractive index. And that's like what we looked at with the uh, plastic wrap, with the, the saran wrap, whatever you want to call it. And you can actually see it in all kinds of materials. So this is um, from a CD case. I am old enough, I had a lot of CDs. This is from REM actually here, so let's put it in. And there it is, you get lots of beautiful colors because the polymers are going around different directions and this has been kind of, as it was formed, it was sort of stretched in different directions. And you kind of see in this point where there was a lot of stress, when it stamped that little tab into there, created a lot of stress and aligned the polymers a lot in that region. So that really is due to the microscopic sort of molecular orientation of the polymers in this material. And I can prove that to you because how would we change that orientation? We heat it up. Okay, well, let's heat it up. So let's turn this on and I'm gonna be very careful. And let's see here, there we go. So let's just really get this going a little bit. Okay, that was kind of hot. And now let's see if it looks different. And sure enough, right there in the middle, we've got a very different pattern. Right? And that's because I really did move the molecules and that wasn't very satisfying. Let's see if we can do it. A little bit more here. Let's really get some motion going because, you know, REM, kind of sick of REM, kind of a little bit too self-important. So now, oh, okay, now we've really warped it, right? Let's have a good look then. Is that going to change the birefringence? And yes, quite a bit, right? We've kind of lost it in there. Okay, don't try this at home. <laughs> 